Welcome, my friends. I'm in Villafranca del Penedes, where the Regulatory Council of the Denomination of Origin Penedes is located. Penedes is not only one of the most recognized wine production regions in Spain, but also one of the most ancient viticultural areas in Europe. The region is particularly well known for its cava production, but we leave this for the documentary of the Denomination of Origin Cava, as Penedes and Cava are two different DOs, both strongly related to the Penedes region. Indeed, a very diverse selection of exceptional steel wines as well as non-cava sparkling wines are also produced under the regulations of the denomination of origin Penedes. And then we have the Corpina, which is a new twist for sparkling wine production. Penedes is pushing modern winemaking to the crisps of the way. They're becoming officially organic. I hope that you enjoy the journey. The denomination of origin Penedès is located in Catalonia, Spain. Centered in the regional capital Villafranca del Penedès, which is close to San Salvador de Noia, known as the capital of Cava, the Penedès DO includes 66 municipalities and is divided in 10 different subzones, as indicated in the map. However, a more popular zoning divides the Penedès DO into three main zones: the Alt Penedès, the most inland and with the highest altitudes, with low yields and high quality fruit the Penedes Central to the southwest and with the majority of the region's total production and the Vice Penedes in the coastal areas. Winemaking in the Penedes region dates back to the Phoenician introduction of Chardonnay vines during the 6th century BC. Wine production in the area and an active export market remained through the Moorish occupation of the Iberian Peninsula. Philoxera did not forget about Penedes and also devastated its vineyards in the late 19th century, upon which most growers focus on white grape varieties. Grape grapes have gained renewed attention in modern times, particularly due to the effort of young winemakers to revitalize winemaking and the inclusion of several international varieties. Tony, we are at the entrance of the Masia. Calcasañas, which is the name of the house, because in 1810, the eldest daughter of the Casañas family married the heir of the Rossell family. In Catalonia, the heir is the Ereu. They married and joined two lands, and the house became Calcasañas. But the house is older than that. Yes, the house from the 17th century. It's from 1637. It's a house of four winds. It had a protection wall around it in the past. That wall was destroyed and 
In 1910, they built this enclosure that makes the patio now. We're inside the house. I see the year of construction in the first brick. Yes, it was built in 1638. It is on top of a big rock. It seems we are in a sedimentary area, but we also have rocks here. They use this rocky place to build the house on top. It's a typical Catalan Masia, with a large main entrance and rooms on the sides. The floor is the original from that time. In the 17th century, this was a work zone where they store tools. Some rooms down here were for the workers living in the house. How were they called, those who work and live in the Masias? The Masovers. They took care of maintenance of the house and lived on the ground floor. This room contains history of something that is very characteristic, not of Catalonia or Penedes, but of this particular area inside Penedes, right? Exactly. We are in a room dedicated to the human towers, or the Castellers, as we call them here. We are in the traditional Castellers area, a triangle between Vilafranca del Penedes, Valls and Tarragona. We always say this is an area of viticulture, vineyards and Castellers. My father, who was a fan from Vilafranca, founded the Castellers of Vilafranca in 1948. We are those who wear green and we have been the best during many years. There is a competition between villages. Yes, there is a scoring based on the difficulty of the tower. And every other year, it takes place in the bullfighting arena of Tarragona. For someone who doesn't know about it, and even for those who know it, the most impressive thing is who gets all the way to the top. The kids, we call them ancianetas, kids six to nine years old. They are brave kids, you know, those kids that parents cannot control because they are always climbing trees, falling. This is an activity that they'd love to do. They are not forced to do it, of course. And they need to climb. Sure, and they have safety measures now. They wear a helmet, mouth protectors. It has changed this a lot. We are in La Franca del Penedes, who is uh, where the um, regulatory council of the denomination of origin Penedes is located and I had the pleasure of talking to the director of the regulatory council, Francesc Olivella. Francesc, glad to be with you. Thanks for receiving us. How are you? Very well and thanks for including us. This is a denomination born in 1986, if I'm not wrong. 1960, as a matter of fact, Indeed, in 1933, in the Gaceta of Madrid, with the Spanish Republic, there were recognized three important denominations in Spain that should be officialized. Jerez, Rioja and Penedes. That did not work. But in 1960, the first regulation of the denomination of origin Penedes was drafted and approved by the minister. But you had good information, as in 1986, it was modified to its current status. How many wineries founded it? Uh, how many do you have now? At that time there were 25 wineries. We started with just a few. There are now 150 wineries registered. We have 2,500 viticulturists, many of which we expect they will start making wine and their own small wineries to add singular wines to the market. Penedes is associated to Cava, in principle, but there is much more than Cava in this area. Indeed, the Cava regulation is an independent denomination. Inside the Penedes regulation you also make sparkling wines, as well as still wines, or quiet wines as you call them here. You have a specific qualification for sparkling wines, of the highest quality, that is classic Penedes, which indeed must be 100% ecology. Can you elaborate? Yes, under the Penedes DO regulation, the sparkling wines must be 100% ecologic and have a crianza of 15 months. 
which soon will become 18 months. They must be elaborated exclusively with grapes from the Penedès. It is a territorial criterion. From an outsider point of view, someone who is not following your day to day, it seems a little complicated. I believe I understand it now. As when we talk about sparkling wine of this area, you can drink a cava, you can drink a classic Penedès. In addition, there is now a new association with our standard regulatory council, like Corpina, making things complicated. Yes, it is a little difficult, that's true. We understand the consumer wants to know what the difference between these different styles is. For sure, in the three trademarks, there are similar products. Because in the end, the producers elaborate products following their own criteria. But there is something important, that is, the dimension of the system. The denomination of origin, Penedès, comprises a large territory with a level of sparkling and still wines, aiming at high quality. There are other products made in the same territory. And by neighboring wineries, aiming less at high quality and focused on volume. Some choose Penedès for high quality products and others, legitimately, choose to produce larger volumes. These are different options. In classic Penedès, there are 15 producers elaborating currently 1 million bottles in total. They are achieving to be seen as a territorial denomination. Penedès stands at the front in development, research and experimentation. Ancestral varieties, varieties resistance against disease and ecology. In fact, you have a determination to become 100% ecologic for the whole denomination in 2025. This is very ambitious. Yes, during the COVID confinement, we have worked in a strategic plan for the denomination of origin. On top of working out plans for sustainability and regenerative agriculture, with less CO2 emissions, to recover the soils, etc. We also committed to have in 2025 all the wines regulated by the denomination of origin 100% ecologic. This is an important commitment. You already have many ecologic producers. We have around 60% of our wines 100% ecologic already. We are a territory strongly committed to ecology, committed to sustainability. We understand that without this, there is no future for the agricultural market in general, and the wine market in particular. Then we have these two very crucial projects. The ancestral varieties like the Forcada and Moneo, varieties that we have already recovered and are being planted by many growers. And on the other hand, the European project Vriac, to achieve grapes resistant to mildews, drought and climate change. In this section, we will cover the specific nature of the climate, geology and soils of the Penedès region that determine the character of the wines produced in this protected denomination. The climate of Penedes is Mediterranean, with mild winters and hot summers and moderate rainfall evenly spread across the growing season. There are substantial differences between the coastal areas of the Vase Penedes, drier and hotter, and the inland zones of the Alp Penedes, at altitudes up to 800 meters with respect to sea level, which tend to be colder, more prone to frost, and with a higher rainfall rate. The different mountain define a region of high diversity of terrains, aspects and altitudes that result in a varied system of microclimates. We are here in San Pau de Ordal, 
and I'm with Martí Albet, who is the family owner of uh, Albet and Inoya, who is a, a very peculiar winery, as we will find here in the Penedes. Martí, thanks for receiving us. The climate. I'm very interested in understanding the climate of this area and of the Pyrenees in general. How would you define it? Well, it varies. Basically, it is a Mediterranean climate. This in general terms as it's touching the Mediterranean, but it gets up to 900 meters of altitude which brings also some continentality. The Mediterranean climate is typically dry winter and summer seasons and rain in spring and fall. This is Mediterranean. We are in a valley close to the Mediterranean. This is totally a Mediterranean climate, dry. With climate change, we get less rain. Still, this is dry growing, there is no irrigation. Therefore, we depend on the weather. We have vintages with more rain, others drier. This determines our work in the vineyard. We are in Subirat, uh, in the Penedes, uh, and I'm with Jesse Jopar, who is the family owner of Jopar Winery, a uh, very well-known winery making outstanding sparkling wine in, in the area. And we're going to be talking to her about a few things, uh, particularly now that we are in the vineyard, uh, that relate to how grapes are grown here. Jesse, thanks for receiving us. Hi, thank you for coming. The high mountain is a good place for the Parallada due to the climate, which is a bit colder. Yes, here we have a Mediterranean climate, but colder. The nights are much colder, particularly during summer. The diurnal change is a very good factor during the ripening of the grapes in the last days before harvest. It feels like there is a constant wind here. Yes, here we have Cetus nearby, which is in the Mediterranean only 15 kilometers from here. We always have these winds around noon, and in the afternoon we call the Lijbin, which is the wind coming directly from the sea, and it cools the zone down. The region has a very diverse geology that mixes sedimentary compositions from both continental and maritime origin. Soils are composed predominantly of sand, clay and rocks in the inland and limestone in the coastal areas. The diverse soil composition, terrain characteristics and generous climate allows for a vast selection of grape varieties to adapt well with this region, including a number of international varieties. There are three differentiated zones, Alp Penedès, Beis Penedès and Penedès Central. Where are we now? Actually, there are several subzones that have been established out of a recent study. I don't remember well, but if there are six or seven, for example, there is one area called Marina de Garraf, touching the sea and very influenced by it. And an annex to this is Montañes d'Ordal, which is where we are right now. We are around 300 to 400 over sea level. It is not the highest zone. There is another zone on the other side of the valley where they arrive to 900 meters. What we have here as a difference from the central valley is shallow soils with less organic matter and parcels are in terraces. This leads to a more complicated viticulture. Soils in this area in particular, how are they? These are usually loamy soils, but then we have textures with a lot of sand and textures with very little. It is very important to know well the terrain, as each soil is worked with a different level of humidity. Soils with more sand can handle more humidity. Those with little sand 
will compact if you work them with high humidity. This is sedimentary soil. These are sediments, sand, lime. These are sandy loams. Do they have good drainage? Yes, pretty well. Clay is what does not drain well, but here are not dominant. Clay is common in other areas of Penedès, but in our area it's not dominant, it's not abundant. Ours are a little more fertile. We also have stone, the soils are deep. The vine roots can reach 8, 9 or 10 meters in depth. In this area we use a term, we want our vineyards to have saor. This is when water is retained at a depth. That's why it's important to have rain at the end of the winter, March, April, May, because the water reserves stay at high depths, not superficial, and stays there for the hard summers. An aspect facing north, which is over there, cools down the vineyards in a Mediterranean climate. When the summer is very hot and the sun during the day could be too strong, I assume it will get your vines colder. Then with the drop of temperatures overnight even more, leading to fresher grapes, more tension, more acidity. Yes, we always look for freshness in our sparkling wines. We classify them as clean and fresh. Yes, do long and very long crianzas. An average of 40 months from our sparkling wines. And we arrive up to 150 months. We do more crianza, and that is why we look for freshness. Even with such a long crianza, to keep the freshness that comes from the climate and the soil as well. Since you mentioned it, I wanted to ask about the soil. These are lime and clay. Are they stratified? Is it all mixed? How is it of rainwater? These come from the tertiary era, the Miocene, going 600 million years into the past. This was all an ocean. We have an area nearby with a vertical cut. We can see the soil stratification all the way to the base limestone in this area. Jesse, we are in a vertical rock cut that is spectacular. Up there is where you have your vineyards. That's correct. We are in the zone of Les Flandels, from where the vineyard name comes. This is a vertical cut of 15 meters of pure limestone rock that was formed in the Miocene 16 million years ago. In this area, the rock is pretty solid, perhaps too difficult for the roots to ride down here, although it may find its ways. But if we move towards that area, we can see the stratification of the soil, right? Yes, we will see all the layers that have formed during all these millions of years. All right, but you guide me as I'm scared of walking through here. see the different layers of the rock and the most curious of all is a zone where you can find oysters the zone illustrates the presence of water this was the bottom of the ocean and all these are fossilized oysters in this area there was a tropical climate and this was a river delta right where the ocean finished and then we can see the different layers formed during the years The yellow color is calcification of the sedimentary deposits and, and then you can see here some loose rocks that if you touch it would fall. Yes, these are alluvial rocks from rivers. 
the roots can dig through this composition. They can get through it easily indeed. The open cut that we have seen before is due to the porosity of the limestone rock, which led to a fracture and opening of the vertical cut, which the rock breaking into two and creating the walkway. And this is characteristic of the most mountainous areas of the Penedes. Yes, you can find oysters in other places, but this particular cut has been hidden for many years. We've discovered only two years ago, which explains why it is so well conserved. And likely the essence of your wines comes from here. Yes, the mere reality, the freshness and the lull part stamp, absolutely. Thank you very much for showing this to us. As I mentioned before, also the Penedes region has predominantly focused on white grapes used in the production of sparkling cava. There has been a renovated effort to increase plantings of several autochthonous red grapes, as well as international varieties, both red and white. Viticultural practices vary depending on the style of wine being produced in Penedes and also on, on the distinct general climatological scenarios and terrain characteristics. Perhaps the common attribute is a determination of becoming a fully sustainable viticultural region, with the official resolution of becoming a formal ecologic denomination of origin in 2025. Let's see what Penedes viticulturists and producers have to say about this. Let's talk about viticulture. I particularly like to talk to you about this because you were the first in Spain to focus on sustainable and ecologic viticulture. Can you tell us how this started with your father? Historically, the grapes were sold to large producers of sparkling wine. Ecology at that time was something very far away. Nobody practiced it in the Iberian Peninsula. There was demand for it in other countries more environmentally conscious. And there was this importer who wanted ecologic wines from the Iberian Peninsula with an ecologic certificate. Back then my father was vegetarian, not anymore now, and they proposed him to try it. You're a vegetarian and perhaps you like this. And he started making a small production for that importer. Then we decided to do it for all our production, and we were the first. But you have gone even further. You have started projects to recover ancestral autonomous varieties. You focused on developing new clones, perhaps that is not the world, more resistant to disease and minimize the use of chemicals. Yes, this started 20 years ago, around the year 2000. My father was looking for ancestral varieties that were not planted anymore in the area. He was looking for resistance to disease. An ecologic would use a much lower level of chemicals than in conventional viticulture. The products are less aggressive, but we still have to use them to some extent. We still need to apply some. We realize that many of these old varieties in the forest have survived in the wild, resisting diseases. If they have survived, it's because they have resistance. They had not had treatments. But when you place them in vineyards, they would become weaker and would get diseased. We are now developing a project run by my father to look for varieties resistant to fungus that need almost no treatment or no treatment at all. You operate your vineyards in a strictly ecologic manner. Can you explain what is this about in this area? Yes, this is in the traditional manner. We started with ecologic viticulture in 2012. We had to pass a conversion period of two years because the land had been worked in a conventional way for many years. Synthetic fertilizers are completely forbidden organic or of organic origin, from products that are also ecologically guaranteed. 
This decreases the nitrogen levels in the vineyard substantially. In transiting to Ecologic, you usually lose 15 to 20 percent of production because you cannot use powerful fertilizers as it was done before. That first. After that period, the vine cycle auto-regulates. Then we do use phytosanitary treatment, copper sulfate for the downy mildew and sulfur for the powdery mildew. These are the practices of our grandparents. The climate here accompanies us well. Indeed, the project is to become 100% ecologic in a few years for the Penedes to be the first denomination of origin with all its wines ecologic. The intention is for 2025 for everybody. I would say that right now and speaking from memory in percentage terms, I believe we are the denomination with the highest percentage of ecologic viticulture. It's easy to do ecological viticulture. Here we have the diffusers of sexual confusion to treat against grape moths. This was an invention that made people wonder how it worked. They told us that we just apply it and we wouldn't have to do other treatments. And this is what it's about, as it's a non-invasive technique. The only thing it does is to diminish the multiplication of the plague. We don't kill anyone and we control a plague that was very important. Moths and what other diseases? You have fungus, I assume here there is low disease pressure. As I said, the vine is safe here. We have the mildews from the pruning, moths and basically nothing else. In the oldest vines, we do have wood diseases, but that is something you cannot do anything about. Penedes is famous for three white grapes, Sarello, Parellada and Macabeo, which have been used in the production of sparkling wines during many decades. These, as well as other white varieties, grow best in Alpenedes and Penedes Central, benefiting from higher altitude and lower temperatures that provide long growing seasons leading to fully developed berries that maintain the high acidity and low sugar levels necessary to produce still wines of low alcoholic graduation to later create sparkling wine. Red varieties, including Garnacha and Monastrel, grow best in the warmer areas of the Vice Penedes. Before the Phylloxera, we are talking about 1900, 1890. Most vineyards in the Penedes were of red grapes, but they were mainly used for distilled products and bulk wines for exporting. Therefore, when the Phylloxera arrived, it was a moment to make a decision as all vineyards had to be replanted. They have to use American rootstocks and craft the grapes for the territory and automatically it grows the elaboration of sparkling wines. At that time it focused on white varieties for sparkling wines which grew in volume with respect to the red ones. With respect to still wines, again, lots of focus on white grapes. We have Charello, which is our main autochthonous variety, and that gives very good wines, either young or crianza, reserva and gran reserva. On the other side, they start to appear again in the red varieties, the Samoy, Cariñena, Tempranillo. And then they start working with the ancestral red varieties, recovered by the Torres family, La Moneo, which is a red variety with a future to be discovered. And also with foreign varieties. We are working with Cabernet Merlot, also very well adapted to this area. We are in an elevated zone with a marvelous view of the Montserrat mountains. It cannot be seen well due to the fog, but this is the Pendes Valley with San Sadurnid and Oya at the end. This is a privileged location. You are at 400-500 meters of height. 
Yes, we're in one of the highest zones of Penides. Right here, we are about 450 meters of height. We're in the vineyard of Tichu, which is part of the Flanders zone of Lopart. Here we have three vineyards. They are high mountain vineyards and formed with very old vines. Specifically, the Pichu vineyard with the variety Montenegro, which is how we call Paralada here. The Paralada of High Mountain is a vineyard of 80 years of age. You have several grapes in this vineyard, since we're talking about grapes. You have Charello, Parellada, De Montonega, and I assume Macabeo as well. Yes, here we have three varieties. Do you use the three of them in your sparkling wines? Yes, we use the three of them. The variety XRLO is the queen variety of Penedes, and the one we have the most in our area together with Marcabio and Paralada, but we're possibly the ones with most high mountain, Paralada. From fresh and modern sparkling to full body red wines, Benedes has lots to offer when it comes to production techniques. These are almost as varied as the number of winemakers in the region. And this is particularly obvious when it comes to sparkling wines, with Cava D.O. producers on one side, classic Benedes producers under the Benedes D.O. umbrella, and the independent and self-regulated Corpinat Association of Producers on the other side. Here is where you elaborate your white steel wines, which you made in several different ways. That's correct. We are in the room where we elaborate our white fanio. This is a wine of terroir from a set of contiguous vineyards. A 100% Cerello from one of the highest zones that we have in the Ordal Mountains. We produce it in three different ways and then we blend them. On the one hand we use stainless steel as inert as possible, with low temperature vinification. What about the yeast? With respect to yeast, we do several kinds of wines. For some we use selected autochthonous yeast, and for others, commercial yeast. Then the concrete eggs, without steel. They have an egg shape because they help to maintain the lees in suspension. These wines are worked with the lees in suspension with batonnage. The egg shape helps these lees to stay longer in suspension as a result of convection. And then you have barriques of oak and acacia. Yes, we use oak and acacia. We use acacia particularly with our whites as we want a low impact of the wood in the wine, looking for wines displaying the fruit characteristics. But then with Fanio from Cerello, we do some part in oak. With the traditional barrique of French oak and medium toasting level. And then the acacia that is not toasted to bring more floral aromas. So acacia does not provide that much wood impact, why? No, it allows micro oxygenation, but it's a wood way less aromatic. Marti, we're now in the room of your red wines. Tell me how you work here. Here we use mainly French oak and some American oak as well. The process of passing through barrique depends on the type of wine. The top wines, generally after malolactic conversion, get directly into barrique. We taste them and we blend them on a coupage. Some wines age all the time in barrique. And we work with five different coupers. You made several reds. Which one would you put apart? Any one a little more special, perhaps? Well, the star of the house is the Reserva Martí. It carries my name. My father created it when I was born. Basically, Cabernet and Merlot, and a bit of Marcelan, which is a grape from the south of France that we grow here. We place all our knowledge in the selection of the vineyard, selection of berries, cold maceration, 
and then direct to Barriques, new two-year Barriques. It spends a long time here and the wine acquires lots of structure. It's not a wine with too much oak. It is very balanced. We always look for balance. We avoid having too much wood. Tony, here you made a crianza of your steel wines, right? Uh, what do you have here? Here we have a series of our red wines. This is the wine that we call Roca Plana. It is a mono varietal of Sida that comes from a single vineyard of three hectares. Here we do the crianza in French oak barriques for six months because we don't want too much oak. This is a variety of strong character. Sida has powerful characteristics and we don't want to mask them with too much wood, so we limit it to six months. You also have some crianza whites. Yes, we have whites in barriques of 300 and 500 liters. This is a white wine of Charello that is fermented in the barrique and then aged six months in barrique. We do batonnage, moving the lees, left after fermentation a couple of days per week. It is a complex wine. And then we have a natural wine. It is a natural wine formally, as all wines can be called natural. Is this Charello as well? No, this is Macabeo. The fermentation is inside this clay jar. It's a natural wine. We call it like this because nothing has been added to it, not even selected yeast, as it ferments out of wild yeast that we have previously nurtured in the Pie de Cuba from the vineyard itself. We don't add any sulfites, no clarifying agents. We avoid oxidation with this. It's a wine that's a little special, like all natural wine. Jesse, we are in this Masia, so beautiful, from 150 years ago. This is where your grandfather and your great-grandfather started the elaboration of the sparkling wine. Yes, my grand-grandfather. The first production in 1867 happened here. Are you going to show it to us? Sure, let's go. This is Mycia from the 14th century. In 1385, we find the first document that talks about it. With great views from the top of the hill. In a strategic place. As all good Macias, it has its cellar where they stored the wines elaborated here. Here you have a cava where you illustrate how the second fermentation in water was done. This is the first carver where my grand-grandfather started to do the first bottle of Lopart in 1887. Your original bottle is in commemoration of that first one made here. Yes, commemorating the first bottle that we did in 2012 for the 125th anniversaries of Lopart. Here you left the bottles horizontally for the second fermentation and once completed you move them over here to get rid of the lees. Here they lied and then the last step in the desk and then the disgorgement. What was the production then? How many bottles of the first vintage? They started with 1,000 bottles and we have bills showing that they were sold for 2.5 petius. If we translate to current value, we are talking about 50 euros. It was a product of high quality already back then. There are too many styles of wine to taste in Penedes. We have been fortunate to do this with some of the most outstanding producers of the area. And the food is not only great, but highly peculiar. Have you ever heard? about the Catalan calzots? Have a look.
We are in a standing place to taste some wines under the sun. Yes, this is what tourists are looking for. Absolutely. What are we going to try? We are going to start with a wine that is still not in the market. This is a sample that I have taken from the cellar. It's a wine that we will commercialize in one to two months. It will be called La Bolada, meaning to take off. It's a wine easy to understand. This will be the first wine in the Iberian Peninsula made out of resistant varieties. These are varieties not known by the public, but that come from the traditional varieties. These are the Muscaris, a variety derived from Muscatel. And we have Sauvignat, which is delivered from the Sauvignon, and the Marina Rion that comes from our recovered project of ancestral varieties. This presents some disease resistance as well. It's a very aromatic wine, easy to understand. Aromatic, yes, very much. Also very tasty and with lots of fruit. It has white flowers. It's fresh. You drink and drink. Charello, El Fano, which we already discussed, which is made in three different ways and from a single vineyard, El Fano. Fano is the name of the person who worked that vineyard in the past. In the past, vineyards were usually worked by a person from the village. Is it Vino de Paraje? Yes, this is a singular vineyard. It is the highest of our vineyards, delimited with a stone wall that is characteristic of the area. We have restored it and it's very beautiful. The wine is Charello, aged on its lees, and this is a different wine. Oh, you feel the wood? Yes, this is a complex wine. It is mouth-filling. I find dried herbs. Very elegant. That is what we look for. The acidity, it has tension. It has acidity, alcohol. It displays very well. A long finish. It's a wine that ages very well too. This is another wine that we obtained from our project of ancestral varieties. Is Belat a grape? Yes, Belat is a grape, a red grape, obviously. The name of the grape, when you recover an ancestral variety, you make a biological search, and if there is no match, then it's a new grape. Then you are free to name it as you wish. We have done this before. For example, Marina Rion, a new white variety, it is the name of my grandmother. And Velat was playing the time it has remained hidden. Velat is hidden in Catalan, and we changed the V to a B, which are the letters of our family's surname, Albert. Very original. The wine is from the 212 village, so it has some years. It reminds me to Pinot Noir. Yes, even the color. It has complex aroma. Perhaps mushrooms. Tobacco. Truffle, perhaps tobacco. Like a cigar box. Like a cigar box. That is what my father always says. It even says it in the back label. This wine has high acidity for a red wine. This is why we commercialize it after some aging, so that we can integrate the acidity into the wine. And the last one is the wine from when you were born. Do you even have your hands imprinted? This is a wine with a Bordelot style. Cabernet, Merlot, with a little bit of Marcelin, a grape that we have grown here for a while and works well. This wine is perhaps a little more aromatically restricted due to its elaboration style. These are Atlantic varieties. It has good acidity, rounded tannins and a long finish. Very well finished in mouth. It has been taken care of. Yes. This stays two years in barrique, then three years resting in bottle. It lasts for a long time in bottle. 
We are now selling the last bottles of a 1998 special vintage that is a fantastic wine. It has high complexity of primary and secondary characteristics, but most likely in a few years will develop lots of tertiaries, as it has all the necessary components, acidity, tannins, all very well integrated. It is not dry tannin, it's a rounded tannin. Marti, thank you very much for this tasting of these exceptional wines. I hope that you can continue with your restoration project and the development of resilient grapes. I find it commendable, as we say in the USA. Yes, this is very important for us. It's our flagship. The resilient varieties that you have tried today is only the start of many more wines that will come in the future. Thanks for coming. Alex, this is a representation of your steel wine, showcasing the identity of this area. Yes, as we discussed, our variety is Zarello, our queen. And close to Zarello, we have something that is kind of new, but is indeed very old. Let's try a characteristic Zarello first. A white wine, young, fresh, an appetizer wine, for the summer, on a terrace while the food is cooking. Obviously, there are great Zarellos with Criantha, but our idea for this wine was to get an outspoken wine, young and fresh. To sow the fruit? Exactly, the character of Zarello. This is a 2020 vintage. It is young and fresh. I started to recognize the particular character of Zarello that I don't see in other wines. This is a wine with 11.5 degrees of alcohol. It's an easy wine to drink. It's very fruity. It presents itself as sweet without being it when it enters the mouth. Yes, it gives that sensation. This is a casual wine. Zeke. In Catalan, Zeke is the younger brother. And this is the youngest brother of our wines, Sarello Vermel. It is a grape variety that has been in our vineyards forever, but never with dedicated vineyards. You can always find one or two vines in a vineyard, which was always considered an annoyance. But we have started to purposely harvest it very recently. So recently that until last year, it was not authorized. The grape is pink, neither white nor red. It is very peculiar, very fruity. The wine is actually orange. Yes, exactly. It is orange. It is a very curious color. If you close your eyes, you don't know what you are drinking. It has strawberries. It's like Zarello, but with the aromatic characteristics of a rosé wine. I would say strawberry. Correct. All right, Alex, thank you very much. My pleasure. This is the most important part of the visit. It is not like reading about it. If the product in the bottles is not good, what I have explained to you in the winery has no merit. We will start with a charello, which now carries an identification from the regulatory council to attest that it is 100% charello. The wine ferments in tank and later ages on its lees for a period of five months. Cerello is very tropical, pineapple, but I think the main characteristic of Cerello is that it's oily in the mouth. It feels the mouth, powerful. These are Cerello very worked in the vineyard with viticulture complemented with cover crops discarding 15% of the grapes in a green harvest because we look for a great selection. You feel the acidity, right? You can feel the aromas. 
It is true that fills the mouth. It's a long Finnish wine as well. The taste stays for a long time. And the Syrah. The Syrah. This is a very singular wine. As the variety is singular as well, there are great wine lovers of Syrah. It is like Pinot Noir, a variety with its followers and detractors, because it provides very ripe fruit and is often reductive. You usually need the wine to open for a while, and then it has those very smooth tannins. Our Syrah is easy to drink, even with a 14% ABV. It has a powerful color. I planted it here in Calcasañas because I like Syrah very much. It's a Mediterranean variety from the Rhone in the south of France. In fact, this is already there with very ripe fruit, even raisin fruits, very ripe. It displays this ripe red fruit. We should have opened it earlier as it is still a bit reductive. It needs air for a bit to get rid of this reductive characteristic. Many people use it as a coupage variety to blend with garnacha and other varieties. We do it monovarietal. Tony, I'm glad to have tried your fantastic wines. These are the two singular wines of the house, the Roca Plana and the Birolet Charello. We're going to taste our original, elaborated with the Montenegro, which is the Paraladia of High Mountain. We have been in the vineyard. We're still in the vineyard. And it contains Marcabio and Xralo, the three principal varieties of sparkling wines of the area. It has very fine bubbles. How long has it been in Crianza? This is a 2010 vintage, therefore 130 months of Crianza. A 2010 vintage going to the market on 2022. In 2021, we are almost at the end of this vintage. Soon we will commercialize the 2011 vintage. Very good. Uh, the color is spectacular. It has become a reference as our first sparkling of our house from 1887. That was the first wine elaborated by the grandfather of my father. Very complex aromas. It has complexity, but fruit as well. Yes, ripe fruits. Marmalades. We always look for freshness and fruit, for the priamories to display even after a long crianza should be present. Then it has those biscuit aromas derived from the leaves, very present. Aside the Perilada, the Montagona, as an accelerated oxidation, it provides those peculiar notes that remind us of the sherry wines. <clears throat> yes, that is true. It's almost sweet. It feels like a nice cake. Well, but it is a brute nature, very dry. But the long crianza confers this complexity. It lasts for a long time. Also very creamy. And a very fine mousse. I also find almonds and nuts. Fantastic, thanks. Cheers, salut. Jesse, I cannot think of a better place to taste your wines than in the old Masia with this view of the valley where it all started. This is Leopardi, elaborated with the typical varieties Ocabio, Exelalo, and Perilada. Six years of Crianza. Here we look for the best wines that talk about our vineyards. You'll find aromas from the Crianza accompanied with fruits. It has some tropical tones, but also apple and pear. White fruits as well. 
You can also identify forest aromas similar to what we have found around our vineyards, the Mediterranean vegetation. Yes, I see what you mean. It is very fresh in the mouth, very fine and elegant. Definitively. A long finish. An embracing fills the mouth and the acid is clearly manifested, longitudinal. The wine leaves you wanting another sip, right? Yes, it invites you to drink. Before we move to the next wine, and still with the first one in my palate, I would like to know a bit more about the association of producers Corpinat. We have seen the denomination Cava. We also see inside the Penedes denomination the classic Penedes as a special classification for sparkling wines. And on the other side, we have your association with a dozen producers approximately that you have separated from these two somehow. You're starting to make sparkling wines with a given style and with a specific regulation that you think is better suited to differentiate your style. Can you explain how do you have if defined. It originated from family producers with a long history in the area of Penides, which is the birthplace of the sparkling wines in Spain. With the idea of setting high quality standards and an association with territory for our sparkling wines. We then created this association called Corpinat, which means the Penides heart. Pina is penides in ancient Latin, nat is born and core is heart. Born in the heart of Penedes, then we delimited an historic territory with the help of geologists and historians to ensure a territory with a long history of sparkling wines. It's an open association. We were six founders and now we are 11 wineries with the idea of growing to 20 or 30, the more the better, as it would mean that we all aim at the same objectives. Always thinking about who works the vineyard. All wines must be ecologic, elaborated and vinified in the winery and hand harvested grapes. To finish, we will taste the family Legate. We launched it last year and has 156 months of Crianza. This is a super long Crianza, 13 years of Crianza in the bottle, and it all comes from a single vineyard, the vineyard of Paulino, which is very close to the family nearby. It is a very old vineyard, one of the oldest that we have, 86 years old. This is the only XRLO. Chegat is legacy in Catalan. Yes, it is in commemoration of our parents. It's, it's balsamic, very fine. With what food style would you pair it? With fish, rice, or even with roasted goat child. Particularly if prepared with aromatic herbs, it helps to remake with balsamic character of the wine. I wonder how it would pair with calzots, because we're going to eat calzots today, which is one of the most typical dishes of this area. It would not be a bad pairing, as the high acidity will help you cleanse the palate. Well, we're going to eat some calzots with a sparkling wine from the area. Thank you very much. Again, so the, wanna, we're going to try calzots. Yeah, this calzots. Is a very this is a, food from this area, right? Absolutely, yeah. This is something very mm. typical from, from mm. Catalonia, a specific region in Catalonia. It has become widespread and okay. something very special. Oh, this is the bread uh, with tomatoes spread on it, also very typical, pan to market. And the calzots are uh, something very, very particular. These are mm -hmm. onions that are cooked on the flame, on the fire. Okay. As you can see, they are completely burned. They are long because they are uh, grown in a way that they become long. Well, it's we, a very specific way of eating this, right? Yes, because uh, you peel them with your hands 
and then you dip it into the sauce, which is also a very typical sauce from here, made of uh, pepper. It's called romescu. Okay. Pepper, tomato, garlic, olive oil, uh, mm, uh, almonds. Okay. Uh, okay. So all products from from here. And you dip it here, and then just. It is like this. All right, so, so for this, get ready. you need to protect yourself uh, a little bit from getting dirty. Yeah, so people have bit. developed uh, in recent years a technique which is just okay. covering yourself, protecting yourself so you don't get dirty. Good. So we just pick up one of those. Maybe that one looks very good. Oh, that's okay, super so big. you grab it with your hands. Okay. You pull it. Uh, and in principle, you should be able to pull it down. Uh, sometimes it works better than others. Once you got it kind of pressed, okay. you dip it. I mean, it's, it's no secret to it. Okay. And? Mmm. <laughs> and it's delicious. As you can see, delicious. So, you know. And now what? This is super you, dirty. You just have to clean your hands a little bit so you can drink a little bit. Cleans our palate, palate. Yes. so nothing em, uh, better than a Yopar Absolutely. to uh, accompany right. this. Good, good ending for this documentary. Okay, enjoy. Wow, Penedes, what a place. Breathtaking landscapes, formidable diversity, unique great varieties, and a never ending list of wine styles to taste. One could dedicate a full life to understand this amazing region where so distinct wines are produced in such a great harmony. It has been an absolute pleasure for the Wine Dose team to visit the area. We will come back soon. Cheers.